A frequently asked question that I get a lot when people find out that I'm a diesel tech is how do engine brakes work and why can't they use them in residential areas? So I've decided to make a video to try to explain this in a way that people who aren't diesel mechanics can understand it, kind of dumb it down if you will. Uh, just that the random people that might want to watch this video and find out how do they work and what do they do uh, can understand it. So let's start with what is an engine brake. The most popular version of an engine brake is a compression brake. And what a compression brake does is it reverses the normal power flow of an engine. Normally when an engine is creating power, it sends that power through the transmission, through the drive line, eventually to the wheel ends, creating the force that drives you down the road. When an engine is in braking mode, that flow path is reversed. So instead of going from engine to wheels, now the wheels are turning the drive shaft, turning the transmission and trying to rotate the engine. The engine, especially a diesel, is compressing a lot of air. It takes a lot of effort to compress that air. If you don't get a power stroke to pay it off at the end, you are basically gonna slow the entire truck down by trying to rotate the engine. So to make it simple, let's look at the little flow path that I drew for us. So a normal flow path, right, is the engine creates torque, uh, delivers that torque to the transmission, it travels through the drive shaft and differential and ends up on the wheel ends and gives you your forward or reverse momentum. When a brakes are selected on a tractor trailer, that reverses. So now the wheels are spinning because of the vehicle's own weight and momentum. It's the spinning wheels uh, rotate the drive shaft, which rotates the transmission and then tries to rotate the engine. So normal engine operation on a four stroke, you have your intake, compression, power, and exhaust strokes. What normally happens during normal engine operation is that the exhaust stroke is when you want your exhaust valves to open during normal operation. But when engine braking is applied, we want the uh, exhaust valves to open during the compression stroke. Now, the camshaft is not designed to do this. In order for us to get the exhaust valves to open when they shouldn't be opening, we have to use a special tool or a special piece of equipment. There are a large variety of different types of compression brakes out there, but one of the most popular is called the Jake brake. And if you look, it's upside down, but you can see Jake brake right there. Jake brake is so popular that a lot of times we just commonly refer to all engine compression brakes as Jake brakes. Uh, so when you hear a truck making a loud noise coming down the road, you go, oh, he's got his Jakes on. Doesn't necessarily mean he has Jacobs brake manufacturing brakes, but it's just a common colloquialism. So if we take a look at this guy, you can see that it uh, has the word front right here which means that on an inline six cylinder diesel engine like the one this came off of a detroit series 60 this one is going to control engine braking or compression braking for the front three cylinders on the engine itself there's another one that says rear on it that controls braking for the rear three cylinders this whole setup is going to sit right over the top of your rocker arms and your injectors and everything else and is going to use an electrical solenoid to allow oil flow to get into this housing. And then it's going to use a master piston, which are these guys right here, to increase the oil pressure inside the housing. That increased oil pressure is going to cause the slave pistons, which are these guys right here, to push down on the exhaust valve. And it's all going to be time to happen when the engine is nearing top dead center of the compression stroke. <clears throat> so if you think about it, the engine t uh, has all that effort going into it to absorb thousands of PSI of compressed air only to pop open the exhaust valve and release that compressed air at the top of the compression stroke. Hence, no power stroke. So the way it works is oil flow from the engine's lubrication system will come into the housing and it will get stopped by this normally closed solenoid right here. The ECM controls this solenoid, so when the operator selects engine braking, uh, when the brakes apply, uh, the ECM will open this solenoid, allowing oil flow to fill up the housing. One of the rocker arms will start to rise to 
and it'll push this master piston up into the housing. When it does that, it tries to push the oil back out the direction it came from, but inside of this housing, there is a check valve that prevents that oil from flowing back the direction it came from. Since it has nowhere to go, the master piston pushing the fluid tries to compress fluid, and since you can't compress the fluid, PSI gets really high. That increased pressure then forces these slave pistons to push down against the uh, exhaust rocker arm or the exhaust valve bridge, depending on the type, pushing the valve open. And all of this is specifically timed to allow it to do it at exactly top dead center of the compression stroke. Well, maybe not exactly, but real close. So these things are the reason you see all those signs that say do not operate engine brakes in residential areas is because you're taking thousands of PSI of air pressure and releasing it all at once through the exhaust system and it's really loud so of course people who live close to areas where trucks go by don't want to hear that all night long so that's why they have the signs posted troubleshooting these things if the brakes on a truck aren't working is fairly easy the manufacturers decided to put a button on the top of these solenoids and most of your different brakes even if they're not jacobs use a similar type of solenoid yeah, I showed you guys the one that was on the table, the Jake brake housing. Uh, this is where it mounts on this Detroit Series 60 engine. It would go right here above all these valves. Of course, you would have your uh, rockers like these guys are all installed. You'd have all that on there. So we took off a lot of stuff here, including the uh, rocker shaft and stuff for uh, teaching people how to work on these. But if we come over here, you'll see that uh, you got the one housing that's still on here. So the one I showed you in the classroom is the front housing for the first three cylinders. This is the Jake brake housing for the rear three cylinders. Each cylinder on this engine has uh, three rocker arms. You have the injector rocker arm in the middle and then the intake and exhaust rocker arms on the outside. So that means that the cam lobe that's in the middle for this cylinder is the one that controls the injector. If you look right above the injector rocker arm, you see the slave piston right here. So whenever that injector is being pushed up by the cam lobe to actuate the injector, this rocker arm will push up on the slave piston, pushing it into the Jake brake housing. As long as this solenoid is allowing oil flow through it, then that pressure from that master piston pushing the oil in the housing will cause the uh, slave pistons up here on the other side to come down and those slave pistons right here will push on the exhaust rocker uh, causing the exhaust valve to open at TDC of the compression stroke thereby releasing all that compressed air eliminating the power stroke and slowing the whole truck down. On the solenoid there's a button right here at the top if you push this button while the engine's running, you're bypassing the electrical part of the system and allowing the brakes to work with the hydraulics that they normally would. So if the driver said they weren't working, I push this button down and it does work, I know I have an electrical issue. If it still doesn't work, then I'm looking for things like bad O-ring seals, cracked housings, uh, improper slave piston adjustment. You have to adjust the lash between the slave pistons and the exhaust rockers to make sure that they open at the right time and the right amount. If you misadjust these, you either have the valve hanging open when it shouldn't be, or you don't move the slave piston enough to open the exhaust valve at all. So that's just a little intro into engine brakes. I hope you guys enjoyed it. If there are any other questions that you guys have about anything diesel related, please post them in the comments and I'll be glad to do a tutorial video on those as well. Also, please remember to like, subscribe, and comment. I appreciate everybody who watches these. Have a great day. Just a quick editorial correction here. Uh, during the video, I kept referring to these as slave pistons for some reason. I guess I just wasn't thinking about it. Uh, these are the master pistons. So the thing that the rocker arm pushes up on into the housing is the master piston. And the guys on the other side that push down on the exhaust valves, those are your slave pistons. So uh, just a uh, mental error on my part misdescribing that for you guys uh, I didn't want to re-record the whole thing so just pointing it out now so master piston controls the slave piston just keep that in mind all right guys later